Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 28th of the Rico Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Of course, let me know what you think about today's problem. Uh, okay, 486 predict the winner. So you're giving them an integer array. Numbs, two players are playing the game in this array. So you have player one and player two, a game theory problem. Uh, we'll see if it's a binary search problem. Uh, maybe not after they give a hard one. I don't know how these things. I don't know what their logic is. There's no no real logic. Okay, so player one goes first. Player they both had zero points at the beginning. I just turn the player takes one of the numbers from either the end of the array, which reduces the size of the array by one. Okay, and then they add the number, and then the game ends when the normal elements. Okay, so each player can tick um, just from the left or from the right. Okay, uh, there are twenty numbers. Uh, which makes it pretty straightforward. In fact, you can even brute force it if you like, uh, because we've given 20 numbers, each player only has two decisions, so that's just two to the 20, right? Uh, we'll try to do a little bit better than that, but, but you know, in, in a pinch for a contest or something, you know, always keep that in mind, or, you know, keep in mind constraints and do what you can, right? So this is... Um, uh, a couple of kind of comments. The first is that it's a symmetric game, right? Meaning that player one's rules are the same as the player two. Um, there, there are more nuances than that for sure, so don't, don't, don't you know, uh, grill me on the pedantry. But, but that's a big part of it. Um, the other thing is that, that um, not that by itself, but this is a mini-max game, right? Meaning that uh, even though it's true force and you're just trying to gauge if you can win, if you play optimally, you will maximize your score because maximizing your score is directly related to whether you could beat the other person. Um, there's no, in a, in a way, you can think about it as a, like almost like a greedy kind of thing, right? There's no strategy in which you take a fewer points but has a winner, a higher win probability. Well, win probability. Uh, that phrasing may be a little bit off. I mean, you may take like a, a lower score, into lower intermediate score, but if you optimize for your final score to be the max, then whatever path that is, you know, it is, right? And of course, this is a, a you know, a, a solved problem or um, deterministic, so there is a, a solution. So yeah, um, I mean, you know. Okay, so yeah, so, so you know, uh, one way that you can kind of think about this, as we said, is the 2 to the 20 thing, where you brute force left and right, uh, you know, just for each player, you take one from the left, you take one from the right, and then you kind of just simulate, right? So that's n t times 2 to the n, that'll probably be good enough. Maybe not, actually, but, but you know, if, if uh, in some language, you'll be fast enough, probably not Python, though, to be frank, uh, at least on lead code. So, um, but the other thing is that you can kind of, so one way that you may think about brute forcing, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, one way you may think about brute forcing is, well, you take, you remove one from the left or you remove one from the right. So then now you have a sub, uh, sub array uh, and having that sub array, um, you can now, now do recursion on it, right? You take the left or you take the right one element and so forth. Um, and of course, given that, uh, it doesn't change really, or the the. Um, so you, if you kind of follow through that logic a little bit, um, then the, the entire thing is going to be, um, you know, you just basically remove some amount of prefix and remove some amount of suffix because you can't just like pick a random number in the middle for for player one, um, at least during an intermediate step. Um, so then now you can think about it as how many things we remove from the left and how many things we remove from the right. Of course, the inverse of that, you could also do the inverse of that where you just consider the middle chunk, but, and they have eh, roughly equivalent thing, right? So, so here, we, we're gonna try to do, do the minimax then, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't, I never know how to get best score, maybe, I don't know. Right, so then now we have left and the right. As we said, you can define it in one of the two ways. Either way, you basically just have the sub or the the sub string or sub array between left and right inclusive. In my case, you can you know just make sure you define 
they're inclusive or exclusive so that you don't get off by ones. Um, yeah, right? Oops. Um, yeah, so basically if left is equal to right, that means that your, your current player, you only have one element left, so you have no choice, so you return nums of left. Um, and of course, like I said, these are, this works because this is inclusive bounds, right? So if left is equal to right, we have one element left, like we have seen in binary search. And so, oh, I forgot to turn, off, turn on my light. Uh, so, um, so if you have one element F, that is your answer, right? Ah, right, there you go. Maybe now my face is shinier. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, but otherwise you have two choices. You have get left or get right, right? So let's say we get the score from the left. So, okay, right? So the score, this is the score that we, we get. Um, score picking left, say, right? So it's this. And then now we're trying to minimize so we're trying to maximize the uh maybe i didn't speak it clearly now that i think about it we're not necessarily trying to maximize our score though in this case we are we, we're not always trying to maximize our score per se but in this case it's a it's literally a zero-sum game because every every uh what do they call it i guess they just call it in a way okay but uh every element has to be either yours or your opponents, right? So yeah, so so maximizing your score is the same as maximizing the delta of your two scores, but it's not always the case. So I just wanna bring that nuance in. And here we do something called the minimax, and definitely uh, I am probably gonna miss out some details, so definitely read up on it if you're interested in it. Uh, it is part of game theory in general. And, and yeah, and basically we're trying to uh, this is the function that allows us to maximize this part and also minimize this part to get a to maximize the total score, right? And this is the function because, as we said, this is symmetric, and and therefore this is the the other person's, um, you know, they're trying to maximize it, and you 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 assume that they will play optimally, right? So yeah, because if they don't, then they can only get a worse score, and that's even better for you. And score picking, right? I don't always do this. Um, I think sometimes we we jump ahead a little bit because, or uh, um, <clears throat> I think we jump ahead a little bit because I don't know. Maybe it's just tougher to do it the other way. But but that's the way that a lot of these problems are given, right? Uh, with respect to symmetric game. But um, but you can actually imagine it actually be a little bit different if you want to do a if you want a more generic uh, way to solve this you can even say uh, maybe you know uh, let's say you're not sure exactly how the rules go right you can actually do something like get best score player one maybe right left right and then if left is equal to right then we return you know, same thing and then you may have you know same idea but then now to be more explicit, you maybe like get best score player two because you're subtracting players two score. This is their board, and then you know you dot dot dot. I'm just gonna dot 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 these. I don't I don't want to type everything out, right? And then now you have another function for get best best score player two. Their board, um, you know their options. So you write the if statement here, and then maybe their functions a little bit different. Maybe maybe player two gets double their score, right? It's just like a hype you know, uh, uh, kind of a template a little bit. I'm mean, not template, still, I hate the word template. But just like another way to think about it, then like maybe there's, go, you know, this is their function because um, because they get double score for their things, right? So, you know, so you, may, so you may also break it down to two different functions. In this case, because they have the same score and this is what we meant by symmetric, they actually have the same function and you can actually just reuse the function. But it's not always the case. So I just want to, you know, maybe bring it on mine. And in some different problems, even if it is a symmetric problem, um, the the structure is hard enough to write in a way that is generic that you can, uh, that maybe splitting them out into two functions, it's easier to kind of visualize and debug and score itself, right? And and you don't even need two functions, even if the, the function is different, right? Like if you have a double the score thing, you can imagine that you can have also like 
some some if you read enough code, you may re read people do something like add a player function or a player parameter, and then if player is equal to one, then you do this thing. If player is equal to uh, and then you know something like this, right? So you sometimes see this from other people, but you can also just uh, like you know you can do, 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 do something like this maybe, uh, and you see this sometimes from people. Um, that's fine, but but I also like having different functions because then now you have a query separation. The only um, negative, if you will, is that you're going to repeat some code, but it depends on the problem. It depends on how you think about the problem and all these things. I just want to give you options, right? Uh, okay, so going back, of course, now this is our bet, this is our score picking left, and this is our score picking right, uh, our final score if we kind of followed uh, the chain all the way through and everyone plays optimally. So therefore, we just take the max of those two. Um, remove player because we, you know. and that's really it. We could get the best score of zero zero. Oh, sorry, not zero zero. Zero n minus one, and then also if this is, uh, what happens in the tie? Okay, if the tie, then player one is still the you know. So then we just re if this return true. Otherwise, return false, and that's pretty much it. Um, those of you who are ahead of me may kind of notice that here we can actually do uh optimize right um this is actually the the thing that i was gonna i said um if you just leave it like this it probably will pass i'm not 100 percent sure but it will take two to the 20 which is a million ish um which should be okay i mean we can actually test this real quick right but in theory it'll be okay right uh, I mean, Nico is a little bit slow, so you can see that it doesn't take that much, and we, you know, but, but uh, I'm going to go, and this is because n is equal to 20, but of course n isn't usually 20 uh, for a problem like this because, well, you can do the next thing that most people expect you to do, especially if it's a medium, nowadays anyway, um, though maybe the game for you part is a little bit tricky if you haven't seen it before, but yeah, but notice that Left can only go from 0 to n, right can only go from 0 to n, technically left to n. Um, so that means that we can, well, uh, we can memorize it, right? So here we can do something like has cache, oops. Uh, and so, right? And then, you know, you, if you see me done uh, DP ish things before, you, you know. This is basically, yeah, basically we just set out for every input, we make sure that if it has the cache, then we return the cache. And of course, if, uh, we also have to save it down so that we don't have to uh, redo the same thing. And now you have reduced this from, from 2 to the n to n square, right? Why is it n square? Well, like, you know, there are n square possible inputs to this. And each of them takes all of one time and all of one space. Uh, let's run it again. And huh, actually, surprising that this is. Uh, did I not cache correctly? Oh, I forgot to write true. <laughs> uh, see, but now you can see that it is much faster, obviously. But yeah, oops, I actually forgot to cache. <laughs> well, like I was talking and got confused. But yeah, uh, uh, this one. Oh, I guess in the past I thought that we didn't need to memorize and then. Uh, yeah, and then I had to do the caching thing. Okay, so I was wrong on this one, but I think in certain languages you probably could get it memorized, but the code is unpredictable, I suppose. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Hope you were able to predict the winter. Winner? Winter? Man, winter is coming. Predict the winner. Stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. I'll see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye.